Hi guys! Today I want to talk to you about something very peculiar. So let me open paint and let me explain to you. Um, I want to talk to you about uh, LDO application in Power Electronics. It is very strange because um, LDOs are, as you can imagine, are not so used in Power Electronics because uh, you prefer to use SMPS, which are, for instance, the buck, the boost, uh, and uh, whatever you need. The buck if you need uh, to step down the voltage, so this is the input voltage and this is the output voltage, and the boost if, if this is the input voltage and that's the output voltage. So the boost has the output voltage greater than the input and the buck is the contrary. So V out less than V in. And the thing is about the, the SMPS that they contain uh, that they are not so easy to design, they are expensive sometimes, and they contain, they, they contain noise at the switching frequency, which is around 250 kHz or even higher. LDO are instead very simple, and uh, they can't be used if you have to supply, for instance, 10 amps of current, so LDO may not be the best choice. But if you have to supply something, so let me, let me um, let me write this, let me draw this. If you have, for instance, the CAN circuitry, and, uh, you know, you want also isolation, the first choice can be to use a push-pull here. But uh, if you see from the design, the push-pull requires, generally speaking, the inductor here. Yes, here, the, here are the diodes, and but I don't, I don't want to draw this. It requires the LC filter. This LC is quite big, so you can, if the digital circuitry does not require so much current as a e-sync, you can substitute this, this LC, with an LDO. So yeah, basically. At the end of the day, what you're gonna have is uh, something like this. So, as you can see in this circuit, uh, you have uh, A, which is the push-pull. And you can see this because this is the input voltage which goes into this. And then you have the center tapper transformer. These in D1 and D2 are used for the switches, uh, which are grounded to the low side. Then, here you have the rectifier, made with these two diodes, and the input capacitor here. So, these two diodes plus the 10 microfarads give you the rectification. Now, since, uh, the, the, since the, the CAN circuitry D and the, and the isolator C does not, require, does not require so much current, you can think to use an LDO instead. And this LDO requires this because it has to filter the EF switch and this capacitor as an output, which requires less space. Less space than the inductor L. Now, as you can see, the, so this supply goes into the CAN circuitry here which has the CAN H and CAN L. Then you use the S SM1712 712 just to protect the just to protect the CAN the, the CAN lines. And basically the ISO 7721 is just an isolator. It basically takes the signal here and isolate them here. The reason, the reason why you want to do this is because the microcontroller, which is here, has to receive the signal, has to receive the CAN signal, and has to transmit the CAN signal, in, as you can see from the arrows. But you want isolation. And since you want isolation, since, there, since these two grounds are isolated, as you can see, the symbol is different. Oh my god, sorry, uh, this is the ground. Uh, this is the, uh, the isolated ground, this is the, the black isolated ground, analog ground, and this is the 
GNDA not isolated and this is the GNDA isolated. So since, since the microcontroller is supplied from the input voltage right here and it is not isolated and you want to communicate to the other side which is isolated, you need an isolator. Now since these two circuitry, the C circuitry and the D circuitry does not require so much current, you can substitute with the LDO. Now another consideration about uh, VC about this VCC. This VCC are drivers are, are driver currents, are driver voltages, and generally speaking, they must be very clean and precise. Now you may think that you have noise coming from this, because here it is reaching at 250 kilohertz, but this LDO here has a interesting property called. Uh, Ripple rejection. The ripple rejection at the switching frequency. So now let's take an LDO on anti spice and let's suppose that in the other side we will have a voltage, an output voltage coming from an uh, coming from an uh, um, coming from a DC DC converter. And let's see what happens. And now you will understand why. Uh, actually this solution works so um, the first L LDO which I can think of in uh, in LT Spice a very simple one is the LT3065 uh, this is a very simple uh, LDO uh, it has a very low it has a, a reasonable amount of current and it is very easy also to connect so the first thing that you want to connect here is the input voltage, but as we can, as, as we said, this input voltage must pro, must be supplied from a, uh, an SPNs. So it will have two components. The first is the DC component, uh, which, for instance, can be I don't know, uh, 12 volts, 45 input voltage. So yeah, it should be enough. And then we should add the the um, the noise coming from the DC DC converter, so dot param d equal to zero dot five and dot param switching frequency of two hundred fifty kilohertz. We will be ex very exaggerated, uh, so we will use a very high ripple. Uh, so let's use uh, a um, two volt peak to peak ripple, which is extremely high. Uh, so rise is one over two times fs because we want to we want to generate this this uh, triangular waveform here. This is the zero voltage. This is the volt, and this is the ripple across it. So we want to generate this a triangular waveform between twelve volts and eight volts, or uh, twenty two volts and eight volts is is the same. So a uh, a big DC offset, but also a big ripple. The output voltage should be 5 volts with, without so much noise, and you will see that. So uh, the period on, I don't care because it's just a triangular waveform, and the period is 1 over Fs. Uh, so yeah, you don't need the duty, so yeah, you don't basically need the duty cycle. Just 50 50. And now let's connect this to the input voltage. You probably gonna have to connect the shutdown to the input voltage as well, because when you receive the input voltage, it will turn on. The power good according to the datasheet must be connected to the input voltage with a, resi with a sense resistor, with a very high sense resistor. 50 kilo ohms is enough. 300 kilo ohms is enough. Now you have to set the reference and the bypass capacitor. You can take uh, whatever capacitor you want. Let just me let let just let us put a uh, I don't know ten nano one micro uh, IMAX to ground so that we have the uh, maximum current available. 
and the adjustment uh, we will set it to have around 5 volts. So we will take the, the output voltage, let us put a load and also a capacitor. Capacitor of 22 microfarad and uh, a load of, uh, let me just put 5 ohms. This is the output voltage and this is the divider. I already designed everything on paper, so you don't need to waste time on doing nothing. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Okay, everything is connected together, and uh, uh, let me let me put this on horizontal, and this is the input voltage. Everything should be good. So let me run the simulation for uh, ten milliseconds. Uh, okay, maybe there is a mistake in here. Uh, don't see any mistake. Ah, yeah. Oops, I forgot to the curly. I forgot to the round bracket. My bad. Uh, now should be good. Uh, when the simulation is taking too long, it means that uh, it is uh, uh, it is iterating too much the initial solution. So you have to stop. You have to stop the simulation and to skip the initial solution. Skipping it, uh, you have to check. Uh, skip initial operating point solution. I think that this can solve the, the the problem. Ah, yes, it is solved. So in this situation, we have as an input voltage. Let me just take this. Um, let, let let us just focus on the blue part. At the input side, we have the. A voltage which which is coming from the rectificator here and it will be uh, something like this so as you can, as you can see you have the um, a very high DC component but also a very high ripple by the way we can reduce the we can skip uh, cell to 1 million and just have uh, something way faster this is too much 1.1 milli should be enough okay this is enough so let me uh, let me uh, let me see the the output voltage ah no sorry 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 we need to we actually need to check the transient because uh, you want also to see how fast is your LDO? And that's it. So it is not ended. <laughs> so, because the, the capacitor here makes it a lot of slow. So we need to uh, to increase the transient. So the LDO... Okay, so after a, bit, after, after a little bit of, of transient... Uh, let me put 5 milli. Let me decrease the load. Because I, I remember from my calculation that it was actually around 5 volts. Because I, so now it is. So now you clearly see what is going on here. After a, let us say, a long transient. You see that the output voltage is basically clear, clear of everything. Okay, there is some, there is still some ripple, but uh, I will show you in the in the spectra that uh, you don't have so much ripple to worry about. So let me use uh, 10 milliseconds and just uh, 9.5 milli. You will see, you will see in the spectra that the that you will see in the spectra that there is a lot of, of ripple rejection and so you understand why the solution is working because here you're going to have a very clean output without so much noise 
So uh, let us use, uh, uh, let us see the the FFT of the out and the in. Okay, yes, this too. Oh, and now you can see clearly that the switching components, which is at 250 kilohertz, has been basically destroyed. And not only that, only also the harmonics, which has, uh, which uh, which are repeating in time, have been destroyed. So this is the first harmonic, the fundamental harmonic. This is the second. This is the third. Ah no, sorry, this is the third harmonics. Uh, but by the way, there, these are the, the, the multiples of, of the harmonics. You can put in the linear if, if you want to see how much voltage uh, they contribute. And if, if we, with the outer range, what? It's not working. What the? F why is not? I don't know why the outer range was not working. But by the way, you can see, um, you can see that we have the the switching component, uh, the switching ripple from the input voltage, and then we have uh, uh, the reduction given by our LDO. So we have just. Uh, basically less than 10 millivolts of uh, um, of noise which is very 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 good in, which is very very good in order to produce a very stable voltage here so yes that's basically it and uh, i think that uh, i will leave this uh, thumb as a thumbnail which is very good. Thank you guys for your attention and see you in the next video.